right. How we doing, friends? Happy Wednesday night and welcome to a little Flames Nation Live. Let's get to it. Uh, we've got some people watching live with us right now and we've got lots to talk about. Get your uh, get your comments and questions in if you are with us live right now and uh, start getting your questions in or whatever you've witnessed of late for the Calgary Flames as we're underway. What's going on? It's Steinberg with you from the home studio. Um, been, a, uh, been a busy week. Uh, lots to talk about on Flames Talk. Talk to the general manager on Flames Talk today. Lots to get into with a quarter of the season now in the books for the Calgary Flames. And, uh, yeah, it's it's been an interesting, eventful first 22 games for Calgary as they sit a game above 500 after their win over the Florida Panthers, which, by the way, was a pretty fun little atmosphere at the Scotiabank Saddledome on Tuesday night. Okay, uh, Flames Nation Live coming at you right now, brought to you by our friends at DoorDash. Promo code easy FN Live DD. You go use that promo code after you download the app, create the account, and once you use that promo code FN Live DD, use it and you'll get yourself free delivery and 25% off your first order. So use that promo code FN Live DD at DoorDash. DoorDash bringing you Flames Nation Live each and every time. Well, more than anything else, I thought that that game on. Um, that game on Tuesday night against the Florida Panthers, just a lot of fun. The the First of all, good to see Flames fans give a round of applause to Matthew Kachuk. I thought that was uh, nice to see at the first commercial break, but I also love just as much the booing and the hostile response that he got at the Dome because, let's be honest, if, if you were booing Matthew Kachuk, there's nothing wrong with that. That's a guy that told the organization, told Flames fans they didn't want to be a part of it going forward. Um, and yes, he was honest and straight up about it and allowed Brad True Living to go out and make a trade. But at the same time, he still told Flames fans that, hey, I don't want to be here. I'm not, uh, I'm not going to be a Flame long term. So that's... I can understand if you're if if there's a little bit of displeasure with that decision, and it was totally Matthew's right to go about his business that way, and it was totally his right to make that decision. But I can it's also totally your right as a fan to to boo and and show your displeasure. So I thought it was a great atmosphere. I thought Flames fans kind of I, I thought it was actually a really dead kind of dull atmosphere on Tuesday to start. And then as the Kachuk stuff started to pick up, it got better and better and better. And I thought uh, by the time the, the game got to the third period and uh, it was 4-2 Calgary, then 5-2 and 6-2, it was just it was a fun night at the Dome. And uh, I cannot wait to see what it's going to be like when Johnny's back here. Now it's a little ways away. Sean Monahan's up next, and I think that's going to be a much more – I don't think there's going to be any booing while Monahan is on the ice. I don't think there's going to be any booing – when it comes to to Sean's response, because uh, look, that 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 was a very different scenario. Um, the scenario with both Johnny Gaudreau and Matthew Kachuk was that they asked out and didn't want to be here long term. I think Sean Monahan would have been here as long as humanly possible, but they decided to make the trade, which you can understand because that trade allowed them to go out and get Nazem Kadri and, and make that contract signing. But looking forward to seeing Sean Monahan back at the Dome on Thursday night as well. Okay, get your comments and questions in. Terry's uh, the first question in, and uh, you've got time to get your comments, questions in on the live chat if you're along with us. Uh, we always go heavy on the live chat as we go along. I do want to uh, point this out, though. We are now a quarter of the way through the season. My latest up at flamesnation.ca. Um, we, I've, I've got, done a couple. First of all, um, there were the three promising trends early on or, or three things that were real positives in the first quarter of the season. Dan Vladar's play was one of them. Um, Nikita Zadorov kind of in his arrival and his significant progression was the second one. And the third one was the power play work of Rasmus Anderson that continues to be really strong. And then the, the latest one today, well, the other side of it, Jacob Markstrom leading the way with yeah, it's been concerning to see the way Jacob has played so far this year. Uh, Andrew Mangiapane's production and the team's production as a whole were all kind of in the um, concerning trends side of things through the first quarter of the season. The good news about the concerning trends is that I do think that they are correctable. 
I do think Jacob Markstrom is capable of playing significantly better than he has. And I do think Andrew Mangiapane is capable of producing significantly more than he has. And I do think they have talented enough players to be able to make themselves a little bit as a team more dangerous than they have been through the first 20 or so games, 22 games now. So uh, that's up at flamesnation.ca, but the Flames are through a little bit more than the first quarter of their season. So we'll see how, uh, we'll see how it continues as game two of a five-game homestand goes Thursday against the Montreal Canadiens. Okay, uh, on the live chat, let's start with Terry. It says, Dan Vladar is stealing the job, isn't he? So here's where I am on the goaltending situation as Terry asked that question. Right now, I don't think there's any doubt who's playing better. I think there, it's, it's unquestionable that Dan Vladar is playing better hockey right now. And, and I don't, like... I, I, and I think that it's it's fair to be giving him a few more starts as of right now because he has been a the better guy and b playing so well. But where I'm I'm not ready to go quite yet is that you know how, however long we are into the season, a quarter of the way into the season, and 18 or 17 starts or whatever it is now for Jacob, that all of a sudden his job is being stolen or that Dan Vladar all of a sudden is the number one. Jacob Markstrom had an incredible season last year. His first two seasons as a member of the Calgary Flames, he's given them beyond number one goaltending for most of it. And and so I'm just not ready to go down the road that, well, Jacob's washed up and no, he can no longer get the job done and Dan Vladar is the answer for two reasons number one I think that as as I said I'm confident that Jacob can turn it around I am and some people are less confident and that's fine and 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 I and 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 you're entitled to your opinion of course I just think I'm I'm a big Markstrom believer and I always have been so I think that Jacob's got the opportunity and the ability to turn this thing around so that's number one number two is that as good as Dan has played of late, and as much as I think he deserves a larger share of the starting workload right now, we're also still talking about a guy that is very limited in his NHL workload. And until you're able to sustain a high level of goaltending over an increased workload and closer to a number one workload, you never know if, if that goalie is capable of doing it. So because of that, I just am not ready to say, well, it's clear Dan Vladar is stealing the job. And I understand the question, Terry, I do. I just don't think we're there yet. But where I am is that, for instance, I believe Dan's the best guy to go to even Thursday against Montreal. And I think that, you know, in, in the second quarter of the season, if we're talking about 20, 21 games, however you want to look at the second quarter of the year, I, I think we're probably talking about, say, if, if he started five of the first 21, I think like eight of the next 21 or nine of the next 21 is pretty fair. He's playing some really good hockey, and he has not been rewarded necessarily with the record that everybody would want or that he would want. But in his last four starts against Boston, against Florida, against Carolina, and against Pittsburgh, not in that order, but those are his last four starts, he's a 939 goaltender in those four starts. And yet, in in those four really good starts, his record's only 1-2-1. One, and one. So he's given them really good goaltending. The results haven't necessarily been there, but I do think he deserves a little bit more of the starting share. And yet I'm not ready to say that Dan Vladar is, is taking over the number one spot and that you know Jacob's going to be relegated or his job's being stolen. It is fascinating, though, and it's going to be really, really interesting to see how this story continues to play out as we move into the uh, second quarter of the season. From Kyle, who says, what's happened to Kadri? Um, I actually think... So, I think Kadri started the season off. I mean, I think we all saw Kadri started the season like a house on fire. He was awesome, and it was as if he had been a member of the Calgary Flames for the last five years, and there was there was no adjustment period needed. I think I think there were a couple of things. First of all, I think Kadri was absolutely riding some adrenaline right there for a few reasons. Number one, he's coming off winning his first ever Stanley Cup only a few months prior, and number two, I, I think Nazem was really fired up. He, you know, here's a team that that courted him and pursued him from minute one of free agency and gave him a career-making, life-making contract of almost $50 million and turned him into committed to him being a core member of their team. So 
those two things combined, I think you start the season with a huge emotional high and you start the season riding a lot of adrenaline. And that adrenaline and that excitement, I think, kind of propels you through when you're learning a new a new team, learning new teammates, new line mates, adjusting to your new surroundings, all that type of stuff. And I think that as that adrenaline boost wore off a little bit, things have come back down a little bit more to earth when it comes to Kadri because he is still adjusting and he is still learning. I am very confident that Nazem Kadri is going to be a damn good Calgary Flame and, and already has been a damn good Calgary Flame. The one thing that you always get from Nazem is that he tries to be a tone setter out there, whether he's putting up a lot of points or not. But I do think that is why things have dipped a little bit. But over the last little bit, I think Kadri's game has started to, to rebound a little bit and he's been much more of a factor on a regular basis despite the points not being there in a huge, huge way of late. And I really, really like that line of Kadri, Manjapani, and Dubé against Florida. Without question, friends, that was the best game of the season for Andrew Manjapani. They absolutely need more of that from Manj going forward because with, with Gaudreau and Kachuk gone and Huberto in, they're still lacking firepower off the wing, right? And Manjapani being a consistent offensive threat, a consistent offensive option is going to be massive for them as they move towards the the more important times of the season, move towards the, the winter and the spring. They're going to need him to be, I'm not saying he needs to go out and score 35 like he did last year, but they need him to be more of an offensive threat and a consistent offensive threat than he was in the first 22 games. But that game against Florida, he was dynamite. It was all the things that we love about about Manchapani's game. He was in the dirt. He was in the muck. He was physical. He was bouncing off checks. He was getting pucks to hard areas. That's the Andrew Manchapani the Flames need to see on a regular basis going forward. So that was really good. I thought Dubé had himself a really good game as well. And that line was really strong. And that was a positive. One of the biggest positives of the game against Florida. Kadri did not finish with a point in that game. His two line mates combined for five. But I did think that was a big-time step forward and a big-time encouraging trend when it came to that line. Doug says, fans said the same thing about Big Save Dave, so let's not get ahead of ourselves, and Markstrom is still the number one. And and I will say this, Doug, like I, as much as I like David Riddick, and, and love, I mean, look, Riddick was an awesome story here. I think Dan Vladar has more number one chops than Riddick did. I honestly, I think Dan, that contract they signed him to, the extension that they signed him to, I think was really important. And I think that this is a guy that could absolutely develop into a number one goaltender in this league. He's not there yet, obviously, but I think he's got the ability to develop into that. And and I think he's got all the chops and all the ability in the world. His competitive level is off the charts. His His technical stuff is really strong. He's obviously got the big body, the athleticism. So I think there's there's a lot of potential there for him to be a future number one in this league and, and, and with the Flames. But until you see it, until you see it over a long period of time, you never know. And, and Doug's right. I mean, there was a time when people were calling for Dave Riddick to be that guy. And as good as he was, and probably the way that he outplayed, say, Mike Smith as a backup or a 1B, that's great. But in situations where he had more of an opportunity to be the guy, he wasn't able to get the job done to the same extent. So I like Riddick. He was the, the emotional side of it was awesome. It was always a good story, but was never quite able to be that number one guy. Whereas I think Dan Vladar has got the chops, the ability, and, and I think if, if you were to ask me, I, I think he's got a better chance of being a number one comparing him to Riddick. That being said, Doug's point in, in my eyes is is a really important one in that, you know, it was we there, there was a lot of people saying, well, Riddick's going to be the guy, Riddick's going to be the guy. Until you see it, you, you can't really be sure. And we have seen it. Jacob Markstrom has a proven track record of being able to be a high-level goaltender over the course of 55 or 60 starts. And it hasn't happened so far this season, but more often than not, when you're a good goaltender for a long period of time like Markstrom has been, when you have a dip, 
at some point, and there's no scientific, um, there's no scientific formula as to when, but at some point you do return to being the guy you've been, and that dip becomes just a dip. I'll reiterate, though, I do think giving Vladar more time makes a lot of sense here going forward. So I'm really curious to see who they start against Montreal. I'm curious to see how they go about uh, partitioning their goaltenders and splitting them up on this homestand, which sees Game 2 played on Thursday against Montreal. Then Washington is here on Saturday. Capitals and Habs to finish off the week. Not in that order. Habs first, then Capitals on Thursday and Saturday, respectively. But looking forward to seeing how how the Flames go about splitting up their goaltenders on this homestand. Great stuff on the live chat. Always awesome. A little bit later edition of Flames Nation Live, so not as many friends on the live chat. That's okay. We'll do it again later on this week. It's been a weird week, um, and uh, it's been uh, a lot going on, so I'm glad we could get one in, and apologies we didn't do one a little earlier in the week, and uh, we weren't able to get to one over the weekend for some emergency stuff in, in my life, so I'm uh, it's all taken care of, and and we'll be back to our more frequent schedule, I promise, here going forward. Uh, Flames Nation Live brought to you, as always, by our friends at DoorDash. Go download the app, create the account, and use the promo code FNLIVEDD. You do that, you get 25% off your first order, and you get free delivery. DoorDash, always bringing you Flames Nation Live. My name is Pat Steinberg, uh, bringing you all, uh, lots of content here at Flames Nation and FlamesNation.ca. And, of course, uh, check out Flames Talk on Sportsnet 960, the fan. It goes four till six weekdays and after every Calgary Flames game, plus wherever you get your podcasts, uh, go subscribe to Flames Talk. We'd love, love to have you along for the ride. Thanks for joining us on Flames Nation Live. We'll talk to you in a few days on the next one. Stay safe. Be kind to one another. Have yourself a great rest of the week. Enjoy the Flames and the Habs on Thursday night. It's been another edition of Flames Nation Live brought to you by DoorDash. Be well. Talk to you soon.